Good morning, community. How are you? Wow. You're really, you sound really good already. Wakey, wakey. <laughs> if you'll stand, we'll worship. Uh, Father God, we just invite you into this place. We invite you into our hearts and our minds, and we just pray against any distraction over the next hour or so, and we just pray that you feel honored, that you feel praised, and that you accept our offering. It will come nowhere close to what you deserve, God, mm. but it will be all that we have. We love you and we want more of you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Sing with me now. I searched the world But it couldn't fill me Man's empty grave Treasures that fade Are never enough That you came along Put me back together Every desire now satisfied here in your love. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing. Nothing is better than you. Lord, you see them all, and you still call me friend. Cause the God of the mountain is the God of the valley. There's not a place your mercy and grace won't find me again. Oh, there's nothing better than there's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing, nothing is better than you. You turn mourning to dancing. You give beauty for ashes. You turn shame into glory. You're the only one who can. You turn graves into gardens. You turn bones into armies. You turn seas into highways. You're the only one who can. You're the only one. Stay up for a moment here just uh, to interject something into worship for a couple moments as we continue to praise him. Uh, after a really lousy night's sleep, and to be honest with you, a pretty cruddy week, uh, I got up this morning and uh, thought to myself, okay, well, you know, we can suck it up here for about four hours and get through it and put a smile on my face and pretend like things are pretty good. So, But I had a strategy. Uh, Adam always comes in first, and I thought, that was my friend. I'll dump on him, get it over with, and then the rest of the day I'll just put a smile on my face and it, it'll all be good. So I started off by just asking how, you know, things were going for him, and he didn't really say too much, and I thought, uh-oh, <laughs> he's not having the best week either. Uh, so where this is going to go? And in, in that, after a little bit, as we talked a little bit, I felt like the Holy Spirit of God said, you ought to, why don't you stop, you and Adam pray. But I didn't do it. Have you ever been where 
you don't want to, you know, you kind of want to have a pity party instead of going to God. And it was uh, over a little time this morning as God kind of said to me, so you'd, you'd rather run from me and fake it through the church this morning than run to me. And I, I say that to say, I really need uh, singing, yes, but more than that, I need to worship this morning. I need to turn my focus there. I needed to sing the God of the mountain is the God in the valleys too, as we just sang. And uh, I think the, uh, we're going to repeat a phrase in the next line that uh, we, we need to worship. We, ne- we need to worship. So I wanted to invite you, you know, whatever, you know, Adam prayed against distraction. And I pray that we would be able to take our focus. We're, we're going to talk about the Antichrist today, but at the same time, because that, that's where our text is, at the same time, we're not going to focus on the Antichrist. We're going to focus on the Christ. Uh, so let's begin and continue as we worship now. I think after this song, Josh will let you sit down for a second, take a little break. But let's, uh, let's, let's praise him together. Let the king of my heart be the mountain where
We have a short video clip, so if you'd be seated while we watch that. away from life action and we are excited for it to start those of you who are host homes it starts a little bit earlier for you um, but each of you should have received something like this when you came in it is a schedule that gives you a breakdown of the different sessions and things that we have going on during life action and ladies there's a ladies luncheon and because when I talked to my wife she was super confused we put all the details on the back to make sure you have all the details there is child care provided for that on one of the days so Yes, I did. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm in even more trouble because Adam drew attention to it. All right. Um, <laughs> moving on. The, there are a couple things we still need volunteer help with. We need help with uh, food. If you are willing to make food and provide it, there are a couple of dinners. We could use some help with food uh, for the team that is coming in for Life Action. And then we still need a host home for a total of four people. So it could either be two different host homes that host two each or one more host home willing to host four. But we need that in order to reach our total of people for Life Action. Aside from Life Action, tonight, actually today we started our kids' ministry, and tonight we start our youth ministry. Anybody who is 6th grade to 12th grade, you're invited tonight from 5 to 8. We have our messy game night tonight, so make sure you wear something that is appropriate and you're okay with more or less getting rid of when we're done tonight. Uh, we're going to have a good time from doing everything like squirting ketchup at your leaders to throwing octopuses around and playing ultimate frisbee with them. Um, we're going to have a good time. We'd love you to come from 5 to 8 tonight. Women's Bible study starts this Thursday at 10 a.m. If that's something you're interested in, please check out our website. Uh, we, there's more information there, or sign up for the emails, and uh, you can get all the information through that as well. Um, the, this week is our communion, and on communion weeks we do a benevolent offering. And normally that benevolent offering is kind of at the discretion of the pastors and elders to give to people who are in need. This week it is being discretionarily given to uh, Michiana Family Center for their trip to Amazing Acres. And they're going to take some kids down there. If you have any questions about that, please see Curtis. Uh, he's waving his hand right there. Um, and you can give some money in the benevolent one, the one that's marked out there in the hallway for that. Finally, our small groups are starting up, uh, not this next week because we have our Thirst Conference then, but the week after. Um, there is details on our website. Hopefully we'll be giving you something that looks like this next week with uh, the days and times and stuff for small groups. If you have any questions about that, please come see me. I would love to get you involved in our small group ministry. Let me pray, and we'll get back to worshiping. God, thank you for today. Thank you for the opportunity we have to be here uh, to worship and sing your praise. I pray that uh, as we do that, we really focus on you, and we turn our minds and hearts to you uh, in how we sing today. I pray this in your name. Amen. Please stand.
loving in pursuit of what you said. If it all reveals your nature, so will I. See your heart and everything you say. Every painted sky, a canvas of your grace. Creation still obeys you, so will I. Stars were made. Worship so alive. Mountains bow in reference so alive. The oceans roar, your greatness so alive. For if everything exists to lift you high, so alive. The wind goes where you send it so alive. salvation chase down my heart through all of my failure and pride wow I'm going to stop there um, it just hit me you chase down our hearts through all our failures and pride Whew. God of salvation you chase down my heart all of my failure and pride On a hill you created The light of the world Abandoned in darkness to die And as you speak A hundred billion failures disappear ask you to go ahead and be seated. In just a moment here, we're going to turn your attention back to, uh, right, right after Adam paused there, we, we sang about a cross, I'm sorry, a hill, a hill that God created and laid down his life on. We're going to call your attention back there in just a moment. Our, uh, in our series on Revelation, we are on chapter 13. I was surprised a little bit to find that uh, in, in the reading as I started to read about it, they said this is actually the most popular, if you want to say it like that, chapter in Revelation that people like to go to and talk about. There is a weird fascination with the Antichrist. Uh, you know, people are like, you know, who is it? Who is it going to be? So I, I thought, well, maybe I'll start. I went to Google Image. I thought, you know, maybe I'll put something up there that just says the Antichrist or something at the beginning. So I went to Google Image. I typed in the Antichrist, 
And uh, most of the pictures came up as being something that looked like, you know, Darth Maul from Star Trek, you know, something evil uh, devil type thing. There were a few other pictures that we'd recognize in there. And uh, I'm not going to uh, mention any names because that's not, you know, anything that I ever do. But uh, a couple of former presidents were in there. Uh, One, I won't say his name, but his initials are the same as mine. Uh, My name is Dan Thomas, by the way. Uh, And uh, and there's another one who we won't say his name, but his initials are uh, body odor. Anyway, uh, like that. And then there was also Putin. Putin was in there, his little picture scattered in there. And I just thought it is kind of a weird fascination that people have with the Antichrist. I, I discovered this last week. I told you that we introduced this name, the beast, and 34, 36 more times through the, uh, that's the first of 36 times the beast is mentioned. Okay, the beast is another name for the Antichrist. 36 times is mentioned. Did you know that if you take the numbers 1 to 36 and add them together, 1 plus 2 is 3, 3 plus 3 is 6, 6 plus 4 is 10, like that, and you add them all up, it comes out to exactly 666. And do you know what that means? Nothing. But, uh, but I just thought it was fascinating. I read that, and I thought, oh, that's kind of cool. You know, I had to check it out, you know, so I went and it took me two tries to get it right. But, uh, but it actually does come out to exactly 666. But it is kind of, a, you know, the strange fascination uh, with the Antichrist. And one, one other little thing here. Did you know some people believe that Nero is going to be resurrected because of the whole revived Roman Empire thing, which we'll actually get into a couple minutes. But did you know that if you take, I wrote this exactly, Exactly down the way they said it here. If you take an alternate spelling of Nero's name in Greek instead of in, in uh, Ro- Roman, and you take the Hebrew version of it, it converts over and identifies with 666. Now, if that's not proof, I don't know what is. Uh, that, that, that's pretty solid. But my point is, we do get strangely obsessed with this one who is called the Antichrist. And as I prepared for today, I thought, you know, if there's one thing I don't want to do is call your attention to this one who's called the Antichrist. Uh, What I much rather do is call your attention to the real Christ. So we are going to read through the things that the Scripture teaches us about uh, the Antichrist in a minute here. But before we do that, I want to take you back for a moment to last week. Uh, Last week when we were going through chapter 12, we introduced uh, what is sometimes called the um, unholy trinity. We have, of course, the Holy Trinity of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, but there, some folks say it's kind of like we have a counterfeit one, too, which is the devil, the Antichrist, and the false prophet. And in our text today, we will talk about, or we'll, we'll read about, the Antichrist and the false prophet. Last week, we actually began with the Satan, the, de- the devil, and the war that is in heaven. And as we read about that, you might remember, the Bible calls him the accuser of the brethren. Do you remember that? Uh, we, we said that uh, when Satan accuses God to us, he has to lie. When Satan accuses us to God, he can pretty much just tell the truth. Uh, we, he's got enough on us that he can throw that, throw that up there. And he loves it. By the way, the other thing he loves to do, do is get us accusing each other, get us on his side and get us attacking e- each other. But we, we saw that against this accuser, this one who is throwing up our sins all the time before God and to us all the time, it says he, we shall overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. And I want to encourage you, um, many times when we observe the Lord's Supper, we do it at the end of the service, but we're going to take a moment now because I wanted to take your attention and put it back on the blood of the Lamb. To the place where you say, okay, Satan, yeah, you, you got this list of sins and failures you like to keep bringing up and throwing at me. Can I tell you something? Paid for. Completely paid for. I want to focus on that, that God has already paid that price. And I want to invite you to even focus a little bit on, if you want to say, the word of your testimony, because I want you to go back and say, God, here, here's, I'm sorry, here, here's why I believe that. I remember the time when I trusted Jesus Christ. I'm going to go back to that, and I'm going to anchor on that, and I'm going to focus on him. So I thought before we even dipped into that nasty little pool of looking a little bit at the Antichrist today, 
I want to make sure that, first of all, our focus is on the Lord Jesus Christ. So when we observe the Lord's Supper, uh, the way we're going to do it today is I have on each side of this table here uh, crackers that are representing the Lord's body and then a cup of juice to represent the Lord's blood. And there's another table back right in the middle of the auditorium, right where Josh is setting things up right now. And uh, actually, the song that uh, is going to be playing during the time is Overcome. And uh, if you listen, you'll, you'll hear those words in there, by the blood of the Lamb and the word of the testimony. So I want to invite you during this time, folks are going to get up and uh, come up here and pick up a, a cracker and pick up the juice and return to their seats, and then we'll all take them together. If you, for any reason whatsoever, are uncomfortable with that, would rather not partake in communion, that's fine. Feel free to witness. Uh, you know, just watch what is going on. Uh, but if your faith and trust is in Jesus Christ, you've asked Christ for forgiveness of sin. You've repented of your sin, and you trusted him, and he's your Savior. And you say, I know that. Uh, this is something that he's told us to do often in remembrance of him, that we stop and remember because we have an enemy. How do we overcome? By the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. So we want to focus on those things this day. So I'm going to pray, and they're going to begin the music. And like I said, some are going to get up and, and get the elements to go back. I want to invite you really to use this time to relive testimony, to praise him for what he has done, uh, to thank him for the sacrifice that we just sang about on that hill. <laughs> he created the hill, and then he laid down his life on that hill. For a while they said, ah, he's dead, he's gone, but he rose again. And uh, give you an opportunity just personally to worship him. So, Father, uh, thank you. Thank you that we can do that. Thank you that together we can get and we and just turn our attention towards you, that we can almost, Lord, share in something that happened a couple thousand years ago when you gathered your disciples and said, uh, take and eat this and remember the sacrifice that was given for you. Uh, thank you that we get to be part of that, Lord. I pray that each person in here would take that uh, very seriously now, that your spirit would do uh, his work in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen.
was there with his disciples. He took the bread and he broke it. He said, this bread is my body, broken for you as often as ye do this, do this in remembrance of me. Then the scripture tells us that likewise he took the cup. He said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you. As often as you drink this, do this in remembrance of me. To the overcomer, we thank you. We thank you that that power is how we overcome death and sin also. Amen. You do just a little house cleaning or housekeeping, not cleaning. Straighten this up here. There you go. You feel better? Use it then. Okay, we are going to go through and we're going to take some looks at what the Bible describes of the other two members of the unholy trinity. Okay, we're going to look at um, the Antichrist and then the false prophets. So we're going to read through chapter 13 together and then make a few observations. Uh, so there we go. Uh, so John writing says, And I saw a beast rising out of the sea with ten horns and seven heads, ten diadems on his horns, and blasphemous names on his heads. And the beast that I saw was like a leopard. His feet were like that of a bear, his mouth like that of a lion. And, it, and to the dragon that we are introduced to in the last chapter gave his power to him and his throne and great authority. Okay, now... Uh, rising up out of the sea, probably just a picture that this uh, this leader is going to come out of the Mediterranean world. The sea, as they would think of, would have been the Mediterranean. And probably an indication that he's going to come there from the west, from the Mediterranean. Now, the sea at that time, for the people of God, for the Jewish people, was not vacation. Uh, they were not sea-going people. We, we think of going to the sea. Yes, awesome, I get to sit by the sea. They thought of the sea as more horrific and, and dangerous and everything like that. But this beast rises out of the sea, and he comes to power. And we see in him, some of you may remember back when we looked at Daniel, these these beasts, the leopard and the bear and the lion, and we saw how that pictured Babylon and Greece and the Medes and the Persians, and then the Roman Empire comes into power. Well, what we see in this guy is kind of the culmination of all of these world kingdoms. Uh, many believe that because the Roman Empire never actually was conquered, it just kind of disintegrated, that what he will lead uh, is really a revival of that Roman Empire. So they call it the revived Roman Empire. But he is going to come to power. He is going to have this great authority. And on his head seemed to have, uh, I'm sorry, one of his heads seems to have a mortal wound. Now, I want to mention this particularly because Scripture does three times in this chapter. We're going to read it two more times that he was slain like he's going to die, and then he's going to be alive. Now, God, uh, God uh, cannot be copied by Satan. Satan does his best efforts. He counterfeits things. And this is very much like, uh, you know, a resurrection, okay? He is going to... Um, appear dead or be dead and come back into power. You know, so, you know, so when we see that, uh, if we see that, if, if we're here and we, we witness that, uh, that's a pretty creepy thing that's going to go on here. But its mortal wound was healed, and the whole earth marveled, okay? They followed the beast like, like he's resurrected. Boy, we have to follow him. This is amazing, the, the signs and wonders here. And they worshiped the dragon, for he had been given authority to the beast, and they worshiped the beast, saying, Who is like the beast, and who can fight against him? Kind of a strange parallel here where Jesus uh, talked about the idea that you glorify God, you honor him by honoring Jesus. Well, in the same way, they are worshiping the beast, and in that way, they are honoring Satan. And the world is worshiping and bowing down before this dragon uh, as they bow down before the beast. And the beast was given a mouth, uttering haughty and blasphemous words. And it was allowed to exercise authority for 42 months. Again, we have this three-and-a-half-year period. And it opened its mouth to utter blasphemies against God, blaspheming, blaspheming <laughs> easy for me to say, his name and his dwelling, that is, and those who dwell in heaven. Very possibly those who've gone ahead in the rapture. It was their fault. I'm blaspheming them. It was their fault. They were the cause of all this trouble on earth. Everything is messed up. He's blaspheming God. God has basically ruined everything for us here. But I am the one who's going to straighten everything out. 
Also, it was allowed to make war on the saints and to conquer them. And authority was given it over every tribe and people and language and nation and all who dwell on the earth will worship it. Everyone whose name has not been written before the foundation of the world in the book of life of the Lamb who was slain. I want to take just a moment here and talk about the idea of there are those who are going to worship the Antichrist and there are those whose name is written in the book of life. And those two groups are mutually exclusive. You're in one or the other. Okay? And, you know, we'll talk a little bit more in a few minutes about the whole idea of the lamb, uh, I'm sorry, the name being written in the book of life. But I wanted to talk about this lamb again who was slain before the beginning of the world. As we started to sing that last song and talk about creation, I was reminded that God's plan of salvation was perfectly in place then. God is not reactionary. God did not say, oh, stink, Adam messed up, I got to get a plan. Okay? Oh, no, now he's messed up, I got to get a plan. God had it all planned from the beginning. Uh, he was slain. Uh, that was in God's plan. God's plan of redemption was perfect from the beginning. Okay, he's not making it up as he goes along. Uh, God is infinite. He is outside of time. Uh, he is not impacted of it at all, and his plan will not change. So uh, let's, let's go on. If anyone has an ear, let him hear. If anyone is to be taken captive, uh, to captivity he goes. If anyone is to be slain with the sword, with the sword he must be slain. Um, here is a call for the endurance and faith of the saints. Now let me just mention here in this phrase, if anyone is, take, is to be taken captive, to captivity he goes. If anyone is to be slain with the sword, with the sword must he be slain. I think one of the ideas in there that, that I'll mention quickly is that we are n the people alive at that time are not excused because of the deception of the Antichrist. In other words, if they follow him, they're responsible for their actions. I've never told you this before. I had a brief period of time in my life when I was involved in some cross-dressing. Yeah, some of you don't look surprised at all, which really concerns me. But uh, Now, this you got to be old to remember this, but back when I was in grade school, there was a comedian called Flip Wilson named Flip Wilson. And Flip Wilson had a character that he did uh, called Geraldine. And Geraldine would come out, and uh, for some reason, I got in the talent show in our little elementary school, and I was Geraldine. Uh, but Geraldine was famous for this line. She would come out, and she would say, the devil made me do it, honey. The devil made me do it. Uh, over and over again, the devil made me do it. What, what one of the things this passage is telling us is that is not acceptable excuse. Okay, the devil made me do it. No, at this point, uh, those who are uh, part of his onslaught, those who are torturing Christians, they're responsible too. Okay, it is not, okay, this all falls on him. There's those that follow him. And here is a call for endurance and faith of the saints. Uh, one of the other translations uses the word hope in there too. This is where we have our hope that those who are doing wrong, that evil will meet its end. That they're, they're, it's going to be conquered. And this is a theme that's going to come up a lot more as we go through a revelation. When I saw another beast, okay, now here comes the uh, false prophet to join in here. Rising out of the earth, it had two horns like a lamb and it spoke like a dragon. So it's going to uh, look like a lamb but speak like a dragon. Uh, and that way, uh, two horns, uh, obviously a lesser degree than that first beast. It exercises all the authority of the first beast in its presence and makes the earth and its inhabitants worship the first beast, beast whose mortal wound was healed. Again, they're pointing that out again. It's obviously a big deal that, that uh, he has this wound that is healed. And it performs great signs, even making fire come down from heaven to earth in front of the people. And by these signs uh, that it is allowed to work in the presence of the beast, it deceives those who dwell on the earth. So all these signs and wonders. Telling them, here's what we're going to do. We're going to make an image for the beast that was wounded by the sword and let live. Three times, we've got to work this in there. Every time, this is important that you see this, that he has overcome this injury or even death. And it was allowed to give breath to the image of the beast. Will this be a computer? I have no idea. Possibly it could be. But one way or another, this image that they build is going to come to life. It is going to speak and cause those who would not worship the image of the beast to beast to be slain, slain. Also, it causes all, both small and great, both rich and poor, both free and slave, to be marked on the right hand or the forehead. Listen, 
when you talk about the idea of the mark of the beast, uh, what do you think that will be, Pastor? Hey, again, old guy, I remember when that was the Visa card. Okay, don't take a Visa card, it's dangerous. Okay, listen, a Visa card is very dangerous. Uh, there's no doubt about it. Uh, but I don't think it's the mark of the beast. You know, and then, well, it's your phone, you know, uh, that, you, that you have that and everything like that. All I know is this, if it ever comes to the place where I'm around here and people are passing out little things that go on your right hand or, the, or my forehead, don't go near it. So, and we ought to know very well that the technology for something like this is already in place. Okay, I mean, we, we used to, you know, say, hey, they're developing. No, they've developed. I mean, you can look online and find the capacity to, to have a system like this where everybody has, you know, whether it is something just under the skin or in, uh, on top of the skin or where it is like that, but to have that so easy. And, you know, I'm a little paranoid. Okay, I'm a lot paranoid. I don't even like to tap my credit card for that reason. You know, I don't know why I feel better if it actually goes in the <laughs> You know, I feel like... Tch. Oh, man, no. The next thing, it's going to be a chip in my hand. Uh, but uh, I'm a little par paranoid like that, and I'm not really trying to spread that paranoia. But what I am saying is you can certainly see where this would happen. Finishing up the chapter, so no one could buy or sell unless he has this mark. That is the name of the beast, the number on his hand. Uh, this calls for wisdom. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Let the one who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of man, and his number is 666. Now, as I read through this, uh, some of you are probably more educated than I as far as the details of the Antichrist and everything like that. But I, as I read it, at first, you know, I'm writing down all these notes and everything and these theories. And I thought, you know, I really don't, I want to, st I want to look at this as the Bible presents it, but I don't want it to be all about him. I didn't want our service to be, hey, let's, let's focus on that and be obsessed with that. I want us, again, to be obsessed with the true Christ, not the Antichrist. But as I read this thing about uh, calling for wisdom, I thought, okay, there's definitely some cautions I think that we can take away from this chapter 13 just in our everyday life today. So I want to bring some of those out, kind of like warning, dangerous, watch out for this. The first one, I want you to be aware of the instead of. And what I mean by that is this, the word antichrist doesn't actually mean opposite of Christ. It does mean instead of Christ, Okay. And it doesn't mean that Satan is going to be the exact opposite of everything that Jesus is, but he is going to be a lame substitute. However, and this is something that keeps coming up as I study this, he is going to be the type of Savior that everybody is looking for. When Jesus came to earth and walked on this earth, he did not solve all the economic trouble. In fact, you remember when he fed the multitudes, some folks tried to chase after him and say, we want to make you king, and he, he fleed that. That wasn't what he came to do. He did not solve all the political problems and unite everybody together and uh, defeat Rome or exalt Rome or anything. That wasn't what he did, but that was the Savior that many people were looking for, and that continues to be the Savior that many people look for. Um, I would imagine that this individual will be very handsome, Okay, Jesus, the Bible says there is no form of comeliness that we should desire him. There's nothing really that indicates that Jesus was, if you want to say, super charismatic. Uh, and, you know, just everybody was drawn to him because of his charisma, because of his love and his truth, they were drawn to him. And, uh, but not because of, you know, this great charisma that he had or anything like that. I believe that this one will have this and people will flock to him. So we want to be ultra careful about the idea of the instead of, you know, this substitute, this guy who appears as a winner, this one who says he can solve all our problems. People want that. I'd love to have somebody solve all my problems and just leave me alone. I don't really want a king. And when there's some things about the true Jesus that uh, rub people the wrong way, for example, when Jesus uh, talks about the idea that he didn't come, there, there's some places where because of his teaching, people are actually going to be divided. Brother against brother, sister against sister, mother against daughter. Man, we don't want to hear that. Instead of, let's find a Jesus that, uh, that we like. Let's find a Jesus who is saying the things that we want to hear. It, we don't want a Jesus who is saying things that make us uncomfortable, like take up your cross and follow me. Let's, instead of, let's find what we want. 
And the first caution I think that we take as we look at this is to be careful that we are not doing this. We're not trying to form and have a Savior the way we exactly want Him to be. Jesus came to suffer and die on the cross for sin and make a way for us to be made right with God. We want somebody who solves all our problems here and lets us alone. So the first caution, I'd say, is beware of the instead of. I'd also encourage you to beware of crisis control. Now, folks, <laughs> if I ever wanted to be controversial, now's my chance. But I think we can all agree, before we start disagreeing, that governmental powers take advantage of crisis. Okay? Now, careful, Pastor, uh, because we have different ideas about where that is a good thing. Today is 9-11, okay? So remember, after 9-11, we have, uh, what, the Patriot Act, and people fight about that still today. Is that a good thing? Is it a bad thing? It gave the government more uh, look into our life and maybe more control. And uh, go ahead. I might as well go here, too, uh, with, with the whole, everything that happened with the pandemic. You know, how much control should the government have? How, how much should they and everything like that? And we will constantly, you know, th there are not every area is black and white. I mean, there are some areas where we think, okay, yes. I, I mean, I, I don't think I'm not promoting libertarianism any more than I pro re promote republicanism or democraticism. I don't think our answer is in any of that. I think it's in his kingdom. I want to come back to that idea. But, uh, but you know, we can fight about this whole idea, but I think we ought to realize that, in situations of peril, which is described, you know, during this tribulation time, people are looking for somebody uh, who will step up and say, I can solve your problems. Uh, I have an answer for you, and I'm going to, okay, again, some of you are going to be like, Pastor, you're a radical uh, conspiracy theorist. But I feel like I, I ought to say this, beware of somebody that says, I'm doing this for your good. When they've got something they're going to do for everybody. Beware of that. And again, I'm not commenting on specifics. I'm honestly not. I'm not smart enough to. I'm not telling you what to do with your lives. I, I don't play that game. But beware of somebody. Uh, you know, I, I was Googling and researching a little bit of some of this stuff this week and, and uh, reading about, you know, the system that they have in place to help people. You know, the old, I've fallen and I can't get up. Well, they have a system that, it, if I understand right, that's basically ready to go where everybody gets a little chip that will take care of that. You don't have to press a button and say, I've fallen and I can't get up. And they said this is for the elderly, you know, and everything like that. They won't have to. As soon as they've fallen and they can't get up, this chip will know and it will send a message. And you say, well, that's wonderful, you know, protection. I'm just saying, it scares me a little bit. Uh, I am weary of those who are going to step in, uh, but, you know, but we, uh, I guess I want, I want to say it like this. We are constantly looking for the government to make us safer. And I would follow it with this question, how's that working out for us? I, I just want to say it like that. And again, please don't, well, Pastor, win all conspiracy theories. I'm really not. I'm not attacking any specific thing because I don't know that I'm smart enough to do it. But I am saying I think that's an area where we want to be cautious because I think that's, the Antichrist is going to come in and say, I've got your problem solved. I'm going to do this for your good. I mean, why would people follow this? Because it's for our good. And we want to be careful of that. Okay, a third thing to be very careful of is personality. Now, real quickly, it is bad enough, and it is bad, that our politics are all about personality. You know, we seldom, seldomly is anybody voting on substance. It's, you know, this soundbite and what this person said and everything like that. That's bad enough, but where we really want to watch it is when it comes to the church of Jesus Christ, and especially pastors. Okay, watch that. I speak to you knowing that for most of you, you will have another pastor in your lifetime. Okay, for one reason or another, <laughs> uh, it, you will. And I, and I want to say just be careful because there is such a tendency among God's people to be following after personality. And I would just say, please be cautious uh, be very cautious about that. You know, this person has this charisma and seems to have all the answers or whatever like that. Be very cautious of that. Two more I wanted to hit real fast. Religious unity. You say, well, that's a good thing, right? Well, definitely the Bible talks about uh, the idea of the importance of unity in the church and among his believers. But what is going to happen with this false prophet and with the Antichrist is he is going to unite, if you will, all the religions of the world. Isn't that wonderful? 
Isn't that wonderful that, the, you know, that the, the Muslims and the Jews and the Christians are going to be united together? Isn't that wonderful? And I want to tell you, no, it is not. It is not wonderful. Because we, we have this idea already brewing that it doesn't really matter. One religion is the same as the next. Okay? And, uh, and I want to say this again. If you're going to reject Christianity, you know, that's your call. But you can't say it's just like every other religion. It is not. The mere fact that Jesus stood and said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, says, no, you can't have all the other religions and say, oh, they're just as good. Uh, because e either Jesus is right or uh, he's a big liar. And in that case, I don't want to be a Christian. Follow him. It's one way or another. We can't have it where they're all the same. It just doesn't make any sense. It's, it's totally illogical. Going real quickly, but I want to get to the last one. Be careful of the signs and wonders. Okay, we're going to bring this giant image to life, and everybody's going to follow. Look at, the, look at the incredible miracles. It must be true. You might remember when the disciples were excited about the fact that God had given them some miracles to do and signs and wonders. Jesus said this to them. He said, don't rejoice that you about the signs and wonders. Rejoice that your name has been written in the book of life. Okay, that, that's where the most important thing. And just remember, yes, God is a God of wonders, uh, but Satan is a counterfeiter. And from the very beginning, you think about the plagues and, and uh, the way that the magicians of Pharaoh decided to try to copy everything that God did. Now, their copies were inferior, to be sure, but they copy everything. And they have, you know, just some amazing uh, things that people are going to see, and we're going to follow after that. So we're not following after personality, and we're not following after signs and wonders. We're following after truth and after love, and those are, those are our anchors there that we go after. So be very careful in a world that is already filled with deception. I have no idea if the Antichrist lives today or not. Okay? I should tell you some of the other pictures that came up in, in, in there. Uh, but uh, I have no idea. But again, my focus, and this is a, a bottom line, if you will, today. My focus is to get you not to be looking for the Antichrist, but to look, be looking for Jesus Christ. And be, and be focusing on, on that over and over again and get our, get our focus there. And, um, and my, my, the other thing I guess I wanted to walk away with uh, or get you to take away for a moment is this. This business of him saying, either you've fallen after him or your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. I want you to consider that for a moment. A couple years ago, Francis and I were coming back from visiting my son in Colorado and uh, I said, why don't we just drive through? You ever get like that on a trip? And I don't want to stop. I don't want to pay for a hotel. We'll just drive through. And uh, we had made it across Nebraska, and we'd started into Iowa. And I don't know if other people get like I don't actually fall asleep, but I start to, like, lose perspective, and I, and I imagine things. Uh, you know, and all of a sudden, you know, I jerked off the road. And Francis said, well, I said, that car coming right, right at us. She said, there were no car coming right at us. But somehow, you know, everything got kind of weird. She said, we need to stop. Uh, and we pulled over. And she said, I need to drive. Uh, and uh, so she's driving on the road, and I'm on my phone, and I called up a hotel in Des Moines. Uh, and I said, hey, do you have a room? And they said, yeah. And I said, okay. I said, I think we'll be there about an hour. Uh, and they said, okay. So I walk into the hotel room, and I said, give her my name. And she says, we don't have you anywhere. I said, I just called an hour ago. She said, no, we don't have you anywhere. Uh, and so I took my phone, and I pressed the redial button. Sure enough, their light lit up. Uh, so I called this hotel. I know I did. Uh, and she said, well, we don't have you on the list, but we'll get you in. Okay? Now, it's kind of a scary feeling for a little minute, minute there. We don't have you anywhere. You're not on the list. Okay? The Bible talks about the idea that when we trust Jesus Christ, it's that our name is written in this book of life. And folks, it's either there or it isn't. I can't, you know, it's either there or it isn't. I can't, I can't paint it any other way. Either you believe in Jesus Christ as Savior and have trusted him with your life, or you're rejecting him and saying, no, that's not for me. I, I mentioned this be before. Part of me, when I get in the book of Revelation, treads sadly, but a little fearful because I'm like, man, I don't want to come out. And this guy's talking about the Antichrist and the beast, and the guy's wacko. But for me, again, I go back to my teenage years. And when I heard about this, I thought to myself, my name's not written in that book. 
how do I get it written there? And my brother told me how to get, get it written there. He said, Dan, you want to confess to God that you're a sinner. You can't get to heaven on your own. Okay? You need the forgiveness of Jesus Christ. And, and ask him for that forgiveness. Trust him to be come into your life, clean you up, because you can't do it on your own. And at that point, and I love, I don't, by the way, I don't believe God has an eraser. Okay? I think once that name goes down, we're golden. Okay? It's there. And I have, I stand before you with complete confidence that when it comes time to that, he's not going to I don't have you on the list. You're not here. I have complete confidence because I trusted in a God who cannot lie. I trust in Him. So we're, we're not going to close with a song today because I knew we'd be running just a little late with communion and everything like that. I'm just going to close with a word of prayer. Uh, but, um, you know, I always want to say this. I do nothing more important here than talk about salvation being through Jesus Christ. Nothing, okay? N nothing. Not anything we try to do to help kids or family or anything like that. Most important thing is the souls of men. So if this is something that God's Spirit is kind of pricking your heart a little bit because you're like, oh, man, I'm not sure I know what's on uh, Please, I would love to talk to you, introduce you to somebody else who could talk to you a little bit more about that knowledge of Jesus Christ. Father, um, you know, I kind of want to play Holy Spirit here. I'd, I'd love to be able to convict people, and I can't. Uh, so I surrender that. I want to lay that down before you, Lord. Only your Spirit can draw somebody, uh, can convince them that they need you. And uh, I just want to lay that before you, Lord, and ask for Him to powerfully work in our lives. Lord, only your Spirit can convince them, too, that uh, ultimate victory is, is ours in you. When we look at a, a world that seems upside down, and we see the opposite of that in so many places. Uh, Lord, would your spirit minister uh, in convincing us of that victory that is already won on the cross of Calvary in the resurrection of Jesus Christ over sin and death. Um, Lord, help us to trust that, I pray in your name. Amen. Okay, hey, one other thing, I do, two other things I want to mention. Oh, uh, Pastor, uh, the other guy. Josh, uh, he mentioned the benevolent offering. That benevolent box is only out in this hallway. If you'd like to give to help out uh, folks going to the uh, Amazing Acres and provide that, that we can get that opportunity for them through the foster care system. Uh, then uh, there's also the other offering boxes are both doors uh, for the regular tithe and offering. And then I just really want to encourage your prayers uh, next week. You can, you can break out in spontaneous cheer if you want. Next week, I will not be preaching. Uh, we'll have a guest from Life Action, and we're going to have a great time. And, and uh, I am really continuing just to pray. Okay, sorry. Real transparent for a second here again. I, I need this. Okay? I need a little somebody to come in, be excited about the Lord, and share with me and, and everything like that. And I think we all could just use the, use the excitement and the energy of being here worshiping the Lord together. So I want to invite you back next week. I want you to be praying about it. If you haven't picked up, picked up a prayer card, there's a couple of those left out here or that is online that you can join us in the days of prayer that actually started this past Tuesday, but join in any time. Uh, we are not going to meet. Uh, some of us were scheduled to meet uh, for prayer today. We're not going to do that, but I do want to encourage you all to be praying. Uh, throughout the week, our guests come in actually Friday night, and we'll be setting up on Saturday, and we will be ready to go on Sunday uh, for a great week and asking the Lord to do wonderful things. Let's stand. Let's see. We got this unholy trinity, right? We got the devil. We got the antichrist. We got the false prophet. But who are we focusing on? And then get out of here. Thank you, ma'am. Good to...